What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and you're watching our college football channel. We continue with our 2024 schedule preview and projected record series. SMU up next. Here is the 2024 schedule. Let's break it down first. We'll look at the non-conference. They'll play at Nevada. They will play HCU, BYU, and TCU. And that is their non-conference schedule. Not a, you know, that's that's a respectable non-conference schedule with BYU and TCU on there. Two teams out of the Big 12 and then uh, Nevada, who is at least an FBS team. If you look at the home schedule, you got those non-conference games, and then Florida State, Pittsburgh, Boston College, and Cal. Uh, yeah, Florida State's going to be a tough one, but you know, Pitt, Boston College, Cal, all at home. Uh, SMU has a chance to, I think, have a pretty good season again this year in their first year in the ACC, which again makes no sense. But uh, we go to the road schedule. It's at Louisville, at Stanford, at Duke, and at Virginia. Uh, Louisville, probably going to be a tough one, but Stanford, Duke, Virginia, these are all teams that SMU was better than last season. And so, uh, again, this schedule, not horrible for the Mustangs. So we'll start. They actually have a week zero game at Nevada on August 24th, which means they'll have three bye weeks during the season, which is just crazy. Uh, they'll play Houston Christian HCU on August 31st. Then it's BYU on the 6th, TCU on the 21st. So they get that first bye week. After BYU, before TCU, they'll have some extra time to prepare there. The BYU game is a Friday night game. They'll play Florida State on September 28th. So back-to-back -back TCU, Florida State, and actually keep that going with Louisville the next week. That's the schedule. I mean, that that's the stretch right there. TCU, Florida State, and at Louisville. Very tough games, three in a row right there. And then they get another bye week before going on the road to play Stanford and on the road to play Duke. They do get a bye week between Louisville and Stanford, but three road games in a row and i think the last team maybe of syracuse that we did also had three games on the road uh, all in a row like that and the conference controls these schedules they didn't go out there and schedule these games themselves i don't know how that happens i don't know how you have three straight road games but um it, it happens so yeah stanford duke, and duke after the bye week and then they'll play pittsburgh on november 2nd and then they'll get their third bye week before playing boston college on november 16th on the road at Virginia on the 23rd and Cal to close things out. So it's kind of crazy. You know, they've got the three road games there in a row, but they've also got four home games in a row and then two home games in a row after that three game road stretch. So it kind of comes in clusters here for SMU. But again, a schedule that's it's not horrible, it's respectable, especially the non conference, but it's not a terrible schedule. And you're looking at, you know, potentially 10 and 2 if they can take care of business in, in a lot of these games. Uh, but it'll be tough to get to 10-2. And, and our projection, I'll go ahead and tell you, is not 10-2. I'll get to what that projection is. This is a scale that we use. We've talked about this on the other videos. So we will go through and start with the easier wins. I think you've got Houston Christian. That should be a pretty much a guaranteed win. We've got that one in the green. So we're going to go with the green for that one. And then you look at... Uh, the game's in the blue. I think Nevada, you know, maybe put it in the green, blue. It is on the road, and it is an FBS team, so that's why I've got that one in the blue. Uh, if you put it in the green, though, it actually would not change the projection, just in case you're wondering. Uh, so then we go to games in the uh, purple, BYU, Pittsburgh, Boston College, and Cal. SMU should be a better team than all four of these teams, plus they play them at home, so that's going to give them enough of an advantage to where they should be about a touchdown favorite, I think, in all four of these games. And if you were going with our tier system, TCU would actually probably be in the purple as well. But because that's a rivalry, uh, we've seen a lot of close games there in the past, I I decided that that's really probably closer to a 50-50 game. But again, if you put it in the purple, it would not actually change the projection. So then we go to games where I think they're going to be a clear underdog. Florida State at Louisville, they should be about a touchdown underdog in both of those games. But those are the only two games where they're going to be a clear underdog. And matter of fact, might be the only two games where they're an underdog, period. Now, they may be favored in their other 10 games. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a schedule that sets up pretty well. If they can get off to a 4-0 start, even, and, you know, even if they lose those two games, they have a chance to finish strong, maybe win their final six and, and get to 10 and 2 like I mentioned but that's not the projection the projection says they'll split the 50 50 games they'll lose probably one of these games in the purple so if you do all that you average it all out the projection does come out to seven and five so that would be a disappointing season especially where they were last year but they do make the jump into a power conference how will that play you know playing better quality opponents week in week out maybe that gets to them 
I think they can probably do better than seven and five. But uh, again, that's what the projection says. That's what the what the odds are. Uh, do you guys agree? Do you disagree? Where do you see SMU? Let me know your thoughts on this team down in the comments below.